Thank you. I'm Anton Lovchikov, a product designer at Civil Martians, a product consultancy company where we help our clients to build, develop, and launch products. And designing interfaces for dev tools is one of my biggest passion. Uh, that's a whole new world with its own laws and principles, and this world keeps me uh, fascinated like every day, and I suggest us to delve into this world together today. But before that, uh, tell me about yourself, guys. Show your hands if you work on an open source product. Nice. And now show your hands if you work on a DevTool product. That's interesting. Like maybe half of you kept your hands up. And that's strange because if you think about it, the vast majority of open source libraries are actually DevTools. You see, you work on something that eases other developers' life makes them more productive. That's the perfect definition of a dev tool if you think about it. So I congratulate most of you actually here work on a dev tool. But let me formulate this term a little bit more clearly. Uh, I apply quite a broad definition and simply a dev tool is a product for creation. Um, all sorts of uh, code editors, text editors, graphic editors, uh, all sorts of mind map based uh, services, services for musicians, uh, video editing tools, like anything where you can take an empty canvas and start translating your ideas into this canvas, I consider a dev tool. I oppose it to consumer, consumer facing products. Uh, which are designed for consumption of goods, information, funny videos, etc. And that's kind of a point of a problem because we as designers learned to design consumer facing products, all sorts of websites, uh, uh, online stores, uh, social networks, etc. etc. Et um, we weren't trained to design dev tools. Uh, moreover, for a long time, developers have been minorities without like purchasing power. They've been like a strange geeks loving to install Ubuntu and, and type some spells in their terminals. But nowadays, developers are actually quite a big chunk of the market with a lot of money, I would say. So, ah, that's why it's clicking. All right. Um, so nowadays, they are a big part of, of the market. And we as designers, can't sell ripoffs anymore. We can't apply the same principles that we've been using for decades designing consumer-facing products. But um, yeah, what, what, what does it mean? Uh, let's start uh, getting to this subject. Uh, let's start with something that we're all familiar with. Let's start with consumer-facing products. And let's design one and try to reflect on reasoning behind this process, why we design it this way or another. Um, yeah, and the most important part that I forgot, we need to change actually our mindset and keep developers in mind. Um, so here is like a basic online store. Um, yeah, like a wireframe. Uh, and when we design something like that, we actually think about one big thing, and this thing is conversion. Conversion is determined by the success rates of uh, a visitor passing down the funnel, um, and uh, like uh, visitor opens this website, selects a category, finds a product, adds it to the cart, uh, and proceeds to the checkouts, and that's it. A visitor has successfully converted into customer, uh, the website has served its purpose. And the more visitors it manages to convert into customers, the better design is. So if we find that the conversion rate is not sufficient, well, we just open the analytics, uh, look at these not very visible uh, funnels, uh, find the most narrow parts of this, and just go and fix the interface associated with this part. So anything that distracts the user going down this funnel is removed, and anything that helps us to push the user down this funnel is enlarged and accentuated. So that's how we learned to approach this type of products. And uh, actually, there is a huge market around that. 
that's helping us to build more engaging and more profitable products. But uh, all these things hardly helps us to build better dev tools. You see, your products might not even have monetization, so you can't use uh, these monetary tools. Then, uh, unlike customers, developers use uh, dev tools in not, not in a linear, predicated way, predefined way. You see, a user might open your product, start creating a, uh, a document, then delete it and leave and then return the other day and start from the beginning, trying some different approaches and keep doing it for weeks without compiling or, or exporting or whatever you consider the final action of your product. And, and all that doesn't mean that your product is bad, that you need to improve the interface because that's a nature of creativity. We keep doing, we keep trying until the results fully satisfies us. And no one can urge us to finish this job prematurely. So we can't actually use these funnels, cohort analysis and other things because they tell us nothing about the interface. Uh, and consequently, we can't reach out to the user and bring them back to the product to finish this not finished job. Like, we can say, send an email like, hey, you started creating a, pro a project but never deployed it. Get back and get some work done, you little bastards. Here's a coupon. No, you can't do this. That doesn't make sense. So uh, say bye-bye to all this reactivation and remarketing tools. And it turns out that our toolbox is quite empty. Everything that we have is just a basic analytics with some top-level business metrics, which is important to keep track of, but they tell us nothing. They, they don't give us uh, operative insights about how to improve UI and UX. So what are we going to do? Where, where do we get these insights? Uh, well, first of all, we need to change our focus from thinking about the conversion to thinking about user productivity. Yeah. Uh, I'll repeat my statement from the beginning. Mm, DevTool is a product for creation. And like any interface between your brain and reality, the DevTool interface is the point of friction. You all experience this uh, when you uh, catch a spark of an idea in, in your brain which, is look, which, which looks perfect and you rush for a paper or something to fix this idea. Um, but the idea starts to slip away immediately. And the more you struggle with, it, with some tool, the more it gets washed out. So if you manage to develop such a tool, such an interface that helps user to fix, to, to, to translate their idea from the brain to something tangible, they will love it, they will buy it, they will share it and, and do anything that you want. So, how to understand uh, what makes your users more productive? Um, well, um, we first of all, we need to stop looking at, uh, like not stop, no, just don't re rely on uh, numbers and analytics and just uh, keep talking with people, like ask them a question, build a, a supportive community that uh, engages people, that, uh, um, facilitates uh, sharing ideas, problems, uh, uh, feature requests and stuff like that. Glean all this feedback, um, group it and prioritize it. Um, conduct user interviews, UATs with the most active uh, members of your community. Uh, do surveys and stuff. Analyze your competitors. Read all the feedbacks to the uh, product that they uh, launch and, and, and share in uh, app stores. And all that will give you understanding what makes your users more productive. And once you learn that, you can move on to improving your, your interface. Um, yeah, enough talking. Uh, we are designers here, right? And we love to move pixels, so let's do this. Uh, let's design a DevTool interface and try to simulate this kind of process when we uh, ask users, get the feedback, and apply this knowledge to the interface. Here it is, not visible interface. 
Right, it's visible here. Uh, I will share my uh, slides. Uh, this is a believe me, that's a beautiful interface, a beautiful uh, text editor with markdown support, uh, with uh, nice icons. Um, yeah, perfection actually. Uh, but before before um, launching it, mm, let's think about real developers who are going to see this. They are not going to look at, at this interface like this in full screen. What they're going to see every day is something closer to this. Um, just imagine the constant context switch that user, user will, will experience every day for like thousands of times. Um, they type some text in this text editor. Then they decide, okay, I need uh, to attach an image. They open the uh, file manager. Uh, the image not there. They go to the browser to Google it. Meanwhile, a message in Slack comes in. They open Slack to reply it. Gets distracted by dozens of channels. Ten minutes later, they return to this product. And uh, what the hell was I doing? They need to restore the context. They they need to memorize. Uh, the exact place where where they were before they leave, uh, the exact task they were about to uh, to execute, and also they need to get back to the rails. And for doing this, they need kind of visual clues because that's how our brain works. Our brain uh, constantly scans the environment for visual anchors. Uh, and use them for mapping the environment to navigate inside it. So let's give these visual clues to the user. Um, so now uh, icons in the library use some color coding because it's much easier to memorize that I was sitting in a green blob instead of memorizing the exact label and the position in the list. Uh, document list also use uh, color coding for indication the files that uh, have been changed but not saved because uh, changing of the context usually happens in the midway when we start changing something, uh, editing the documents and then get distracted. And also the text itself uh, highlights the syntax. So now user has a chance to restore the context. Okay, I've been sitting in this highlighted line that's uh, red and next go uh, the blue part. Okay, yeah, I was going to attach an image. That kind of it can that, that's how it might work. Uh, but uh, what else? How we can improve this interface more? Mm, why so many space left for navigation? The vast majority of time user is going to spend in just a half of this viewport. Uh, yeah, so let's make it bigger. They will definitely benefit from that. Like this. Um, I just combined the library with a list of the documents without losing the functionality. And, but now user can, you know, brief work in a in, 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 in much uh, bigger canvas uh, and they will definitely benefit from it. And we actually can move uh, forward and make the library collapsible. So now user can close everything, uh, remove all the destructors and be fully focused on the current task. Um, now let's maybe ask users about what they actually do in this text editor. Um, so maybe they work uh, with long structured lists. So in this case, maybe we can give them a preview with a table of context. So now it starts looking like a real mature dev tool. Or maybe they are going this uh, text editor for preparing documentation and then, and then sharing it. So let's give a live uh, styled preview so they can see the real effects while editing the text. Or maybe users even don't need this markdown. Maybe everything that they need is just a uh, rich text editor with some parameters to edit it, like Microsoft Word. So let's give them the full-sized uh, white paper with uh, the parameters on the uh, sidebar. And you see how we changed the interface from from these from these to these. We didn't use uh, any numbers or metrics because they can't tell us that we need to move in this direction. Everything that we did is just keep asking our users, keep listening to them, and that's how we came in, uh, into this point. And I, uh, finally, I, I would like to talk a little bit about this uh, sidebar with parameters because it's, uh, 
a little bit tricky to design. Um, the first impulsive idea when we try to design something like that is just to bring all the parameters into this list. And that's what I did here. And that's not bad. That's a, actually a good idea. Because a uh, user can edit all the parameters in just one click without dealing pop-up menus, uh, like hidden parameters, uh, drop-down menus, and so on. Um, and it saves like a second or two. And which is a big deal, actually, when you multiply it for hours of everyday work. But this uh, decision has one drawback. Because this list might be quite long. And uh, imagine that you need to edit one parameter from the beginning, another one from the middle, and the third one from, from the bottom. And you need to scroll this list back and forth. And this second that we just saved is like easily swallowed by many seconds that the user will waste on this scrolling. So what we can do, if something doesn't fit the viewport, just make it smaller. Before you go off on a rampage, what he's talking about, what about accessibility? Just think about the user, a developer, professional developer who use this interface like every day. When we use something for a long time, we actually don't need to read everything. We uh, memorize many things by heart. So you just remember that the third element here it controls the boldness of the text and you just using your muscle memory, just reach it and change this parameter. Uh, that might not work for everybody, for sure. <clears throat> Some users might find this um, not very readable. Just give user a settings, the ability to set up the size of the, um, of the content of all uh, panels independently. And I love how it is done in Blender, the open source 3D editor. Um, I will try to do it like this. I just, I just press commands uh, button and I can resize the, come on, why I can't resize? Oh, jeez. Mm. Okay, believe me, believe me, you just press command button and you can't resize all these panels independently. I can't resize, I can resize uh, that panel, make it bigger, especially when I start adding some, you know, things here, like this. And it belongs quite long, so I can make it smaller. I will try it once again, maybe it will work. No, it doesn't, sorry. Um, I can resize this one, I can resize even that. And I, I can do this independently. I just love the way how they do it, that's so smart. Uh, but if it looks like too radical to you, in this case we can just, uh, you know, make uh, the groups of parameters collapsible on demand. So user can collapse uh, parameters that they don't need currently and be focused on the, uh, the parameters that they really need for doing the things that are the, they are going to do. And that uh, leads us to the quintessential formula of for uh, developer first mindset. Don't think you are smarter than your users. Don't think you know better how to use your product. Uh, don't force your users to follow your rules. Keep asking your, uh, your users about the real use cases. Keep listening to them and you will be impressed by the number of strange, weird and witful use cases that the user uh, perform using your tool. Keep doing this. Keep developers in mind. Thank you, Sean. Great. Thank you very much for that. Um, we have time for one question. If someone has anything to ask. Yes, Abhishek. Um, so my question is, like, you know, different users may have different feedback, and they will ask for various things. So how do you prioritize which one to build in? By the way, I loved seeing the transition and changes of the interface over time. Um, well, I, 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 I hear here, uh, I hear here a couple of questions. One of them is just to uh, how to pick a feature request into pipeline. And in this case, we have a table sort of uh, sorted by the number of people who mentioned this with some uh, 
core how how it will affect the the whole product. That's one thing. And another one, uh, what I hear: What if some users ask completely different things? Like one may ask, uh, "Give me more tools. That's what I need." Another one can say, uh, "Remove everything. I want to be focused." My point is that you never know. And you, you, will, you can't make such an interface that will satisfy 100% of users. And everything that you need, you need to just make a settable, uh, adjustable interface that every user can adjust for their needs, for their you know, eyes features, for their tasks. And uh, that's the way how it goes. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you.